Right, hello everybody. I know I've spoken about masking fluid before, but I just thought I'd can, kind of give you an idea of something different you can use. Because if you remember before, what we've used, we've used things like a, like a cocktail stick, as you can see there. We've used old brushes like these here, which are caked in my old masking fluid, which are really good for kind of rolling out effects, kind of different ideas onto the paper. And obviously each one will give you a, a unique kind of shape and effect. So they're pretty handy for that. But one thing that I do occasionally use, very occasionally, is one of these. And all this is, is a colour shapener. Okay, so people use them for blending pastels, pencil, that kind of thing. So it's well worth kind of having a go with. I don't know if you can see that. But all this simply is, is a piece of kind of rubber or synthetic or whatever it might be on the end of there. And you just wipe off the masking fluid when you've done. So I'll quickly show you that. Just zoom into this, this commission I'm working on at the moment for you. So I'm working on some grass down the bottom just so I can block it off before I start putting all the detail on for the dog. So I've just got something to work on. So all I'm doing, just showing that one very quickly, kind of loading that up, wipe a little bit off. Normally I'll pour the masking fluid into a little pot first. So it's not kind of just uh, left open because it can also start to set, which I don't want it to do. Not in there anyway. <laughs> It's a bit of a waste if that happens, isn't it? So just a quick demonstration, just show you what you can use. And these are pretty good actually, as you can see, you can get some very fine or finish lines. Not fine, fine. You can get some very fine lines. I mean, normally I'd use, say, the cocktail stick or something like that to, to get the finer lines to kind of flick out the details using the masking fluid whilst it's wet. But if you've used this before, you know masking fluid dries very quickly, so it's worth bearing that in mind. Okay. So there you go, so that's using a colour shapener, which you say is used very often for kind of pastel work or coloured pencils. Um, so it's worth, if you haven't got one, popping one you know, into your kind of arsenal of art materials. And they're not too expensive, you get different shapes and sizes of them, so, but that's this particular one. So there you go. Right, one thing I wanted to show you as well, I'm working on this commission still. Okay, so I'll just cover that part up a little bit. I'm trying to work on this nose. Now, the nose takes a lot of detail. When I look at the photograph, which I'll probably try and pop in if I can for you, there's a lot of detail in all these little tiny marks around the nose. And because, obviously, the, the nose is closer to me than the rest of the dog, also it's a lot bigger, which means this is probably probably the largest dog nose I've ever had to paint, to be honest with you. So, <laughs> so let's get this one painted. I'm going to use a, a little bit of uh, kind of lamp black and just a touch of... French Old Marine in that one as well. So what I'm basically doing, I'm looking at all these little details in between. I mean, from, from where you're viewing it at the moment, it looks quite detailed, but when you zoom into it, it's not. Okay, so I'll zoom in in a minute for you and just show you that. So the idea is, is that when I'm applying these layers on there, let's get a bit more colour, is to not kind of cover every single line in a dark line, if you know what I mean. So you've got to look at the photograph and you've got to look at all the details that are in the nose. Because noses need to look wet when it's done. And I'll obviously achieve that wetness, hopefully, when I apply the watercolour white later on. So I'll just zoom into that a little bit for you so you can just see what I'm doing. Okay, is that a little bit closer? Hopefully it is. So, yeah, so working on these little sections here, they're all tiny little sections, as you can see. But I don't want to make a solid line around every single section. I want to make just little marks here and there where it's going to be slightly darker in places. So it's not all the same, if you know what I mean. So try and vary them when you're painting the dog's nose. Look at the sections, look at the marks. And this will have to be kind of softened down a little bit. As, as you know with all my paintings, I tend to soften down the details in between each layer. So in this case, all these details will be softened in places. Just put a few more in here. See, I'm not making a solid line, kind of breaking the line up as I go along. Excuse the email coming through. I should have muted that. I do apologise. <laughs> hey, this is real time, okay? So, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying not to outline completely all... So I'm not trying to make a thick line all the way around, if you know what I mean. Just little places here and there. Just to kind of vary the, the kind of tone that's within each section, so it's not all the same. Okay. Now, what I'll do with that, obviously I need to wet it all back. But if I just show you on one section alone, so let's go into this large section here. Just going to wet that inside there. Kind of like a bit of bluey black colour. 
and tap that in just in places just to kind of vary it a little bit. So that base just one section alone just done there just about. So that's what I'm looking at, something like that. And then once you've done that with all sections, that means it doesn't just look like an outline, it looks like like a roundness, so you can feel the depth within each section there. So I'll do one more before I finish this little uh, demonstration. So I'm going to wet that one there, okay? Come on back into the blue black colour, French Ultramarine Lamp Black, and then drop in just a bit more pull. <laughs> drop in just a few little dabs here and there, which will add texture and variance to that particular section. So I'm going to do that with every single bit on here. So I'm going to crack on with that and get that finished. All right. So that's just a little quick demonstration when you're doing a dog's nose and trying to work on these little dinky little sections because there's a lot involved. Normally you probably paint it a lot smaller than that because this is quite large, especially for me, even for me, uh, to paint this. So normally it'd be a lot smaller. But um, but yeah, I'll give you some ideas anyway on, on working on that. I mean, basically what I've done with this nose, I've worked on two layers of washes initially um, by wetting the entire nose and then putting a bluey black from the bottom, working my way around to here. Okay, so side here, working my way around to there. Then with a clean damp brush, softened it out so it all blended out a little bit lighter as it came out, okay? And the same would apply with that, put a little bit of brown in that part there, and then work that up as well. So that's basically what I've done with the washes. Let it dry, and then I'll put all the detail over the top. Okay, so hope you enjoyed that. Just a little bit of a tip for you uh, on a dog's nose. Okay.